This is uh, Evan Upton from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Uh, I'm here at the Bay Area Maker Fair 2012 uh, with uh, Element 14, and I've been answering, your, answering some of your questions from Twitter and YouTube. We have no real idea. We don't know why this has been as successful as it has. I mean, I think there's been a, there is a big pent-up demand for, uh, for, for a product like Raspberry Pi. A lot of people have been doing, uh, doing work with platforms like Arduino and want, want to take it to the next level. Uh, just the idea, I just think the idea of having a Linux box, having a Unix machine that's as powerful as anything you could buy back at the start of the century and having that in your pocket for 25 bucks is, just seems like a big deal to people. Oh, I see, I thought he meant where do I get the power from? Um, <laughs> I get the power from, from, from caffeinated sugary beverages. Um, no, the, yeah, the device gets, um, uh, gets its power from the mains via a uh, micro USB power adapter of the sort you might use for a Kindle or a, um, uh, or, or a mobile phone. Um, this is part of our goal to have all of the peripherals you need for this device be readily available things, you know, and things that maybe you already own. I use a Kindle charger for mine, it works, works fantastic. We have a number of plans for cases. Um, uh, our distribution partners each have a, a, a plan for casing, as I understand it. Um, we've seen an enormous number of community design cases, obviously a lot of people doing 3D printing. Um, a lot of people doing 3D printing and then finding their case designs are popular and actually having them injection molded. So we think that it's gonna be a lot, of, a lot of different case designs. People tend to mail them to us. I get case designs through the mail every, uh, every couple of days and a lot of them are really fantastic. So um, the reason why we have an open source, so you may have seen we've opened, we've opened the uh, schematic design, we haven't opened the PCB level design. Now the reason for this is at the moment some of the chips, particularly the Broadcom SOC that we use, is not available in general distribution. So there'd be no point in our releasing the, uh, in our releasing the designs because you wouldn't be able to buy the chips. Um, yeah, we hope that that will change over time. Uh, you know, we're working on a number of ways that we can do something in the area of open source hardware. It certainly, this certainly isn't the case of the foundation uh, jealously guarding its IP. It's just about us wanting to make sure that we don't um, uh, open source and then disappoint, I guess. Uh, that's a good. That's a good question, Supercaller Nano 17. Um, uh, yes, it can work with a USB external hard drive. Um, I think we saw some stability issues with the uh, some of the uh, the March era firmware with USB hard drives, which I believe have now been fixed. Uh, it's actually quite a good way of getting a little performance out of the device because obviously the, uh, the the read write bandwidth to the hard drive is much better than it is to uh, than it would be to the SD card. Um, no, we think you should uh, buy, buy a unit now. Buy! Um, we have no plans ourselves to put power over Ethernet in here. Uh, we've talked to a couple of people about the possibility of add-ons to support power over Ethernet, um, and that's, that's not implausible. Um, we, we have a couple of other things as well. I think, um, I honestly do think your best bet is to buy one now and then look for external PoE solutions. Um, but yeah, we, we know it's the thing that maybe 10% of our customer base wants. Uh, and so it is a thing we're trying to find a way to support without blowing up the cost of the device. I'm not aware of a port of Skype for Raspberry Pi. I suspect that would need to have Skype's involvement. We certainly support the various bits and pieces. I think there's enough processing power on there to do the various codec operations you need for, for Skype. We'd love to see Skype on there. If you uh, are watching this and you work for Skype, uh, please port Skype, please buy Raspberry Pi and port Skype to Raspberry Pi. A lot of people do ask us for it. My favorite movie is Die, I've got to say something manly, haven't I? Um, my favorite movie is Die Hard. Uh, I was tempted to, I was gonna say it was Pretty Woman. I, I'm, I'm very partial to Pretty Woman, but I'm gonna say Die Hard because it sounds manlier. Um, the, the device does heat up, um, but you can use it for long periods of time. So uh, you'll find that you know if you drive the 3D core pretty hard, you can probably heat the uh, you can you can probably heat that chip up to around about body temperature. Uh, it's very hard to get it to go above that. Um, uh, it's so the intention is you know you, um, e even somewhat overclocked. It's uh, it's still um, 
uh, passively cooled to a safe temperature. Uh, it's a big part of our safety story, obviously, for kids. More RAM is an interesting thing. Obviously, the amount of RAM we selected for the device was a, um, was a difficult decision for us. We'd originally planned to have 128 meg in the uh, Model A and uh, 256 in the Model B. Uh, we, we found a way to put uh, 256 in the Model A and keep, keep at the price point. I think for now we're going to stick at 256. There's, there are some really compelling arguments that having a single RAM SKU really helps kind of uh, concentrate the software development effort in one place. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, we wouldn't rule it out in a year or two's time, but right now 256 megabytes should be enough for anyone. Uh, hey Romilly, <laughs> thank you for the question. Um, no news at the moment. Um, we continue to be very keen to work with the BBC on this sort of thing. You know, we know that the BBC was responsible for the, you know, was responsible for me knowing anything about computers because my first machine was a BBC Micro. So, you know, we, we, we really hope we can find a way to work with them. Uh, you can more than theoretically plug in a Wi-Fi dongle. You can plug in a Wi-Fi dongle. Um, so um, a number of people have been able to do this. Uh, we, we ship with some Wi-Fi drivers. I believe the standard firmware image now ships with some Wi-Fi drivers. It's still kind of early days. I think you'd kind of find that 90%, unless you get lucky, not, you know, maybe 90% of dongles aren't currently going to have driver support with Raspberry Pi. But there's a lot of work going on. Uh, there's a list on the elinux.org wiki uh, of, supported, of supported modules. And there's a number of people who've done tutorials as to how to get it up and running. We're trying to, this is, this is something we have an ambition uh, in future firmware revisions to make this a little bit more uh, plug and play. Hmm. Uh, how do you connect uh, media to it? Well, using the wired network is, a pretty, uh, is, is one way of doing it. Um, the alternative would be uh, you can stick a hub on there. Now, I mean, uh, there was a, uh, we could theoretically have put a triple height USB connector on there. Uh, we kind of went with two because it was, it was good for cost, it was good for board size. We do appreciate that there is obviously a case for uh, mouse plus keyboard plus USB memory stick. Those people are going to have to use a hub at the moment. Fortunately, hubs are, yeah, hubs are kind of cheap. So, you know, we don't think this is an enormous problem. Uh, it's safe to overclock the device to any degree you want. Um, what isn't safe is overvolting. So what you'll typically find with the Raspberry Pi, we rate our, we rate our arm at um, 700 megahertz. Uh, most people are finding that they can get uh, maybe up to 800 megahertz without any overvolt. Um, once you overvolt your Pi, you, um, uh, it's, um, you start to degrade the chip lifetime. So what people sometimes will want to do is to overvolt the Pi in order to get more overclocking headroom, and that's what's unsafe as opposed to the, um, uh, the overclocking itself. <laughs> uh, no, but I, I do encourage you to go see The Expendables 2. It's going to be fantastic. We had a lot of fun. Be good. Thanks, Russell. <laughs>
Uh, we've got obviously the GERT board, uh, which is only just about a third party add-on because it's been developed by GERT Van Loo, one of my very good friends and colleagues at Broadcom. Um, uh, Adafruit, I know, have been talking about doing a, a thing they call a plate, a pie plate, which is an expansion board. And then we have some in-house expansion boards that we're intending to do. Um, some of you may have seen on our blog, we've had first pictures out of our camera out on board. We had a 14 megapixel uh, camera wired up to the pie and that was streaming video in. Um, so that's going to be a big deal, a similar thing for displays. Uh, so I guess that's probably the next step for us.